dark hours of the night, the German language snuck up on English and kidnapped some of its words. The German language then raised these words as its own until the English speakers who created them can't even recognize them anymore. Today, I'm going to show you what has become of these once great English words. The English word handy means that something is useful or convenient. It can also be applied to people, meaning that this person can complete household projects. It even shows up in the word handyman, which is a person who does home repairs or minor renovations. In German, the word handy is a cell phone. I'm sure there's some sort of logic behind this, something like, man, that cell phone sure is handy, suddenly became that cell phone is handy, and eventually, cell phone equals handy. Hast du mein Handy gesehen? Ich kann es nirgendwo finden. Have you seen my phone? I can't find it anywhere. My father is an old timer. This just means that he's an old man. You can even use this to greet an old person. Hey there, old timer, how's it going? In Germany, it isn't even a person. It refers to a vintage car. You can even have an oldtimer treffen, which is a meetup for people who own vintage cars. If we translated this into English, it would just be an oldtimer meeting or a convention. In English, we just call those coffee shops. Not Starbucks, by the way. I'm talking about real coffee shops, the ones that you see in paintings and old films. If you see a local coffee shop or a donut shop that is owned and operated by a local person, that's where you'll be finding these oldtimers solving the world's problems one cup at a time. Ich habe heute den coolsten Oldtimer gesehen. Es war eine Corvette aus den 70ern. I saw the coolest classic car today. It was a Corvette from the 70s. Fun fact, the Corvette and the Viper are the only two car models that have a feminine gender in German. There's a joke to be made here, but I'm not sure that I can actually make it. A fun one that kind of did a full circle is the word Beamer. In English, we use this word to refer to a BMW, which is obviously a German car brand, so it kind of originated in Germany, if you think of it that way. The English speakers took the car and made up the nickname for it. In German, however, a Beamer is a video projector. It beams the video onto the wall or the screen. Honestly, I find both the English word and the German word to be dumb. Wir haben einen neuen Beamer gekauft. Jetzt schauen wir Filme im Garten. We bought a new projector. Now we're watching films in our yard. One of my favorites is the word body bag. In German, they use this word to refer to a type of backpack or shoulder bag, usually one that only has one strap, so one of those bags that you wear across your body, hence the name body bag. If you didn't know, in English, this is the word that we use for a bag that you use to transport a corpse. I guess if you had small enough pieces or a big enough bag, you could use both versions at the same time. Was hast du im body bag? Nur meine Schulsachen. What do you have in the bag? Just my school things. Speaking of dead people, public viewing. In German, this is a word that we use to talk about a public place with a large screen where we watch some sort of event, generally a sporting event. In English, this is a term to talk about the event people attend to view the body of a deceased person before the funeral. Around where I live, we call this a visitation. Wir gehen heute Abend zum Public Viewing. Wir werden das Spiel gegen Frankreich sehen. We're going to the public viewing this evening. We will watch the game against France. This next one isn't even a real English word. They took two English words, slapped them together in a way that makes no sense in English, and made up a word in German. This word is Dressmann. As a native English speaker, I would have guessed that this word is used to refer to a man who likes dresses. Maybe he likes wearing them, or maybe he's just partial to them and prefers that the women around him wear them. Who knows? The Germans, however, have been using this word to refer to a man who is a model, especially one who models clothes. In English, we would simply call him a model or a male model. To be fair, the more broad term das Model is more commonly used instead. Der Dressmann in der Zeitschrift trägt Calvin Klein. The model in the magazine is wearing Calvin Klein. If that man is wearing a tuxedo or a formal suit with a jacket, this jacket in English would probably just be called a jacket. But in German, of course, you might call it a smoking. Of course, the English speakers are just thinking about tobacco products, or if you're in one of those places that's legalized it, maybe the wacky tobacco. Ich habe einen neuen Smoking gekauft. Magst du ihn? I bought a new suit jacket. Do you like it? I should probably make a small caveat here. Technically, we do call this a smoking jacket sometimes, but it's still dumb that they just use the word smoking by itself without adding the word jacket to the end of it. I film these videos in my home, more specifically in a corner of my basement that we call my office. You might even call this a home office, as it is an office in my home. 
Germans, when they hear this word, however, home office, they have flashbacks to the dark days of COVID because home office refers to working from home. Ich gehe heute nicht ins Büro. Ich mache home office. I'm not going to the office today. I'm working from home. My least favorite of all of these terms is wellness. In English, it's a general term for overall health and well-being. In German, it refers to the spa and health resort industry. The ways that I've always heard it used in German simply make no sense. Am Wochenende habe ich mir eine Auszeit genommen und einen Tag voller Wellness im Spa verbracht. This weekend, I took a break and spent a day full of wellness in a spa. Borrowing words from different languages isn't always this terrible. Click over here to see a bunch of examples of words that are shared between German and English, but don't make the native speakers of the opposite language cringe with Fremdschämen. Bis dann. Tschüss. Oh, hey, did you uh, see this book over here? It's a, it's a nice looking book. Uh, it's, uh, it's a book that I wrote. It's called Mastering the German Case System, and uh, it'll help you master the German case system. So if you've got problems with der, dein, dem, des, any of those kinds of things, check this book out. There's links in the description for that.